Hello students, this is Mrs. Yaud. Today I'm going to teach you Chapter 2, Lesson 4, Solving Multi-Step Inequalities. So it's really important that you have watched the last two videos and done the last two concept practice from 2.3 and 2.2 because what we're going to do in this lesson is combine both of those together and we're going to be solving multi-step inequalities using both addition and subtraction and the multiplication and division. In exercises one through five, we need to solve the inequality and graph the solution. I will do a couple of these problems with you and then you'll be working on a few on your own. Let's start with number two. So I'm going to take a look at this and I'm gonna circle the variable. So I need to get rid of the four that's been multiplied and also the plus eight. So if you remember, you wanna undo the addition and subtraction part first, just like what you did when we used equalities. So we're going to subtract eight on both sides and that leaves me with 4a is greater than or equal to negative eight. Now I'm going to do the opposite of multiply by four by dividing it out and I end up getting a is greater than or equal to negative two. And that is my answer. Now we just need to graph it. So I need to put a closed circle on negative two and have it go up. That means that all of these numbers are solutions to this inequality and all of these numbers are not solutions to the inequality. If we wanted to check our answer, we'd wanna put in one of the solutions that we do have. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna plug in zero, because zero is a nice easy one to do. So four multiplied by zero plus eight should be greater than or equal to zero. So that's eight greater than or equal to zero, and that does work. Now let's plug in something that won't work. I'll plug in a negative five. So we have four multiplied by negative five plus eight greater than or equal to zero. We have negative 20 plus eight greater than or equal to zero. So that'd be negative 12 greater than or equal to zero. And that doesn't work. And we would expect that it doesn't work because negative five, once again, is not part of our solution set, which is a greater than or equal to negative two. Okay, let's do number four. So I'm gonna draw my line and circle my variable. So my first step is to get rid of that minus six by adding it on both sides. And when I do that, I end up getting negative C over two is greater than negative two. Now we need to get rid of the negative two that's on the left. Notice that what's happening right now is it's being divided. So that means that the opposite of division is multiplication. So we're gonna multiply by negative two on both sides. And I want you to notice that we multiplied by a negative. So if you remember our last lesson, which was from 2.3, we learned that if we multiply by a negative, we have to flip the sign around. So we need to make sure to do that for our answer. So our answer is going to be C, flip the sign, so it's less than now, positive four. And there we have our answer. Now we just need to graph it. Okay, and I did an open circle at four heading down. You try a couple of problems on your own. Please do number one and number three. Okay, for number one, I got x is less than four, open circle at four heading down. For number three, did you remember to flip your sign? I hope you did, because you should have multiplied by a negative three, and then that means the sign flips to greater than or equal to. So that would be a closed circle at negative three heading up. Okay, number five. So I'm going to draw my line, circle my variable. So I notice that the first thing I need to do on this problem is distribute the negative four, just like how you did if there was an equal sign. So I'm gonna do that first. So we have eight still less than or equal to, negative four multiplied by D is negative four D, and negative four multiplied by one is minus four. Now we still need to solve this by getting rid of those negative fours there. So my first step is to add four to both sides. And when I do that, I end up getting eight plus four is 12, less than or equal to negative four D. 
Now we need to divide by negative 4 on both sides. And notice I divided by a negative once again, so that means that 12 divided by negative 4 is negative 3. Now we need to flip our sign around because we divided by a negative number, and then we have d. And I always like to rewrite it, so d is less than or equal to negative 3. And so either one of these answers is a good answer. Now we just need to graph it. And we have our answer as a closed circle at negative 3 heading down. In numbers 6 through 10, we need to solve the inequality. I'm going to do a few of these with you. I'll start with number 6. I'll draw my line and circle my variables. Notice that this time we have variables on both sides of the inequality. So my first step is to move my variables over so that they're on one side and move my constants over so that they're on the other side, just like how we did if it was an equal sign. So I like to move my variables over to the left. So I'm going to add 4n to both sides. And at the same time, I'm going to subtract 5 on both sides. And the reason why I do that is because the constants are now gone from the left side and the variables are now gone from the right side. So that leaves me with 4n minus 2n. So that would be 2n is greater than now we have 8 minus 5 is 3. Okay, so now I just need to solve for this. I'm going to divide out my 2. And I can leave it that way. I, I'm fine with you leaving it as n is greater than 3 halves. If you would like to change that to 1.5 or 1 and a half, that's fine. But usually I just leave it as improper fractions unless it's a word problem or unless I need to put it on a number line or a graph. Okay, number 7. Number seven, we're going to draw our line and circle our variables. So what I'm going to do first is move my variables over. Now I notice something interesting happens here, and that is that the variables cancel out on both sides. So I'm not going to bother moving my constants over. I can just see that it's going to be negative 18 is less than 1. So now I need to look at this. Is that a true statement or a false statement? Is negative 18 less than 1? And we would say this is a true statement because negative 18 is certainly less than 1. So since we have a true statement, our answer is going to be infinite solutions. Some people like to write this as all real numbers. So either of these is correct, either infinite solutions or all real numbers. And remember what that means again is that it doesn't matter what I plug in for h. Anything is going to work. Any number whether it be negative 100 or positive 1,000, or even the symbol pi. It's all going to work for this problem. Okay, now I'm going to skip to number 9. So let's draw our line and circle our variables. This time we have two variables here on the left side and one variable on the right side. So that means that my first step is going to be to combine like terms here. So we have 7 minus 4 is 3. So I'm going to write 3j plus 6 is less than, and I'm just going to leave the other side the same. So there's nothing to combine there. Okay, so now we're going to move our variables over. So I'm going to move my j first. And once again, I notice something interesting happens. The j's cancel out once again. So let's see what we're left with. 6 is less than negative 2. So now we have to look and see if this is true or false. Is 6 smaller than negative 2? Absolutely not. This one, this time, is false. So when we have a false answer, it's the opposite of what we have up here, which is all real solutions or all real numbers. This time, there is no solution that's ever, ever going to work. So our answer is no solution. Okay, you go ahead and do numbers 8 and 10 on your own. Turn the video back on when you're done and see how you did. For number 8, I got the answer as p greater than or equal to 3. And for number 10, I got the answer of no solution. If you got something different than I did, please pause the video and see if you can find your mistakes. Number 11 says, find the value of k for which the solution of the inequality, and then it gives us inequality here, is all real numbers. So what they're asking us to do is to solve for k in this problem. So if I do that, 
I notice that I see that k is being multiplied by the quantity of 4r minus 5. So what that means is that since the whole thing is being multiplied, what I can do is the opposite, which is divide 4r minus 5 on both sides. And when I do that, the 4r minus 5s cancel as a whole group, and I end up getting k is greater than or equal to this. And so if we have k greater than or equal to this, this is a solution. So that is when all real numbers will work. So my answer is k is greater than or equal to negative 12r minus 9 all over 4r minus 5. And that will give us all real solutions. OK, let's take a look at number 12. Find the value of k, making the inequality, and it gives us this inequality here. This time, we want it to have no solution. So what we're going to do is we're going to find what is a solution, just like we did on number 11. And then we'll think about what the opposite of that solution is. OK, so let's take a look at this. We want to solve for k. So let's find all of our k's. We have them here, here, and here. So. My first step is I'm going to move all of the parts that have a k onto the other side. So that means that I need to move my neg uh, 3kx. So minus 3kx here. And I notice that this is also a kx, so minus 3kx, because I put it there because these are like terms, which means we can combine them together. OK, so then that cancels this from that side. And let's see what we have left. We have 2 and negative 3. So that's negative 1. I'll just leave it as negative kx. And then minus 3k is less than 2x plus 4. OK, so now let's see what we need to do. I'm going to circle my k's again. So I see one here and one here. So if you remember back when we did literal equations in lesson 1.5, I told you that if you have a variable twi in two places here like this and you need to move it, you need to solve for it, what you have to do is do the opposite of the distributive property. So I'm going to move my k out and think about what's left, and then the rest of this is going to stay the same. OK, so if I take my k out of this, I'm left with negative x. So that's going to be negative x here. And if I took my k out of this, it'll be minus 3. So my, uh, that'll be minus 3. OK, so now we finally have our k by itself. So since k is being multiplied by this whole quantity here, then the opposite of multiplication is division. So I'm going to divide out negative x minus 3, divide out negative x minus 3. Now, notice what we did. We divided out a negative. That means we've got to flip our sign around. So um, we get then k is greater than 2x plus 4 over negative x minus 3. Now, we have to be careful here. Remember, we wanted to find out when it has no solution. This would be the solution, OK? So these are all the values when it would be the solution. So these are the values for when it's all real numbers, like number 11. So if we wanted to find the one that has no solution, we need to think about what the opposite of greater than would be. So the opposite of greater than on the number line would be less than or equal to. So that means that my answer is going to be k less than or equal to, and then that weird looking fraction, 2x plus 4 over negative x plus minus 3. And so that is when we will have the, solu the no solution answer. OK, that's it. Thanks for watching.